Good morning everyone. Today I'm going to discuss Module 2 of Science 7, Quarter 4, Part 1, entitled Mission Possible, Saving Planet Earth. Before we proceed, let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, and your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, thank you for another life to enjoy, another day to learn, and a new set of things we will experience. As we go through our lessons today, may let us be instruments to do good things. Help us to be obedient, honest, and kind to one another. Please bless our teachers, our schools, and the students. In Jesus' name, Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. So, let's proceed. Kumusta ka sa araw na ito? So, mga anak, we're going to answer this. How do you feel right now? Okay, thank you. So, what I need to know. Earth, so far, is the only planet known to support life. Yes, uh, this is our home. With Earth's position in the solar system, it has the optimal balance of temperature that is neither too hot nor too cold, and where abundant water that is essential for the survival of living things does not freeze or boil. Hence, Earth is just right for life to exist. Because of the Philippine geographic and geologic locations in the planet, our country is gifted with abundant water, fertile soil, diverse flora and fauna, rocks and minerals, crude oil, fossil fuels, and geothermal power. These are collectively known as natural resources on which living things depend for the survival. These resources are not man-made but exist in nature. This module provides you with the scientific knowledge about the different types of natural resources and their examples. And you will also learn also the, and become involved on how you can help conserve and protect our natural resources. For today's lesson, our milk most essential learning competency is that cite and explain ways of using Earth's resources sustainably. And this module aimed to, or this module is divided into two lessons for today. We're going to discuss lesson one, Earth's natural resources. And tomorrow, lesson two, sustainable use of natural resources. Let's go. After going through this module, you are expected to, this is just our learning objectives. First, describe Earth's natural resources. Second, differentiate renewable from non-renewable resources. Third, explain why Philippines is rich in natural resources. Fourth, determine which human practices in using natural resources are sustainable and not sustainable. And last, suggest ways on how to use the natural resources sustainably. Let's go. What I know. So this is our review. Directions. Read the following questions carefully and choose the letter of the correct answer on a separate sheet or K in your answers in our class point up. Okay, are you ready? So let's solve it. Number one. Our environment has many bodies of water and landforms. The things that we take and use from the environment to survive are called A. Raw materials, B. Chemical energy, C. Natural resources, D. Rocks and material. Okay, the correct answer here is letter C. They are called natural resources. Let's proceed with number two question. Resources that can be replaced after using them again and again are called blank. A. Non-renewable. B. Recyclable. C. Renewable. D. Reusable. Correct. That is... Renewable, letter C. 
Number three question. The following natural resources can be replaced easily except A. Animals B. Coal C. Plants D. Water And you are correct. It's letter B. Coal Number four. Which of the following resources takes a very long time to replace? A. Crop B. Oil C. Trees D. Water Very good. That is letter B, oil. How about number five question? What do you call the resources that require long years before they can be replenished? A, non-renewable. B, recyclable. C, renewable. D, reusable. Correct. And they're called non-renewable. Letter A. Number six. Which of the following is correctly much? A. Coal renewable. B. Cotton non renewable. C. Aluminum renewable. D. Minerals non renewable. You are also correct. It's letter D. Minerals non renewable. Number seven. Which of the following can serve as an alternative source of energy to fossil fuels? One, geothermal. Two, hydropower. Three, wind. Four, solar. Is it A, 1 and 2 only, B, 1 and 3 only, C, 1, 2 and 4 only, and D, all of the above? You're correct. That is letter D, all of the above. Congratulations. Let's proceed with number 8. Fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and natural gas are formed from the remains of dead plants and animals that existed millions of years ago. Which of the following statements is true about fossil fuels? A. Fossil fuels are renewable resources because it takes only a short time to create them. B. Fossil fuels are non-renewable resources because it takes a very long time to produce them. C. Fossil fuels are renewable resources because we can replace them easily by killing animals and plants. D. Fossil fuels are non-renewable resources because we can replace them through scientific experiments in the laboratories. Great! It's letter B. Fossil fuels are non-renewable resources because it takes a very long time to produce them. Number 9. The Maria Cristina Falls in Iligan City generates energy from the flow of water. What do you call this energy resource? A. Biomass B. Geothermal C. Hydropower D. Solar Amazing! That's correct. It's letter C. Hydropower Number 10 question. All of the following are considered as land resources except A. Corals B. Crops C. Metals D. Trees you're correct. That is letter A, corals. Let's have question number 11. Which of the following is true about natural resources? Is it A, natural resources are created by humans? B, natural resources are used by humans only? C, natural resources are produced through scientific experiments? Or D, natural resources exist in nature and sustain the needs of all living things? Very good. And that is letter D. Natural resources exist in nature and sustain the needs of all living things. Question number 12. Philippines is listed as the fifth mineral-rich country in the world, third in gold reserves, fourth in copper, and fifth in nickel. Why do you think our country is rich in mineral resources? A. We have advanced equipment to use in mining these materials. B. We have extensive mining activities all throughout the country. C. We are situated in the Pacific Ring of Fire where many active volcanoes are present. Or D. We have a tropical climate characterized by abundant rainfall, high temperature, and high humidity. Great! And you are correct. It's letter C. We are situated in the Pacific Ring of Fire where many active volcanoes are present. Question number 13. Soil is formed from rocks as well as materials coming from dead plants and animals. Temperature, 
rainfall, chemical changes, and biological actions also influence the formation of soil. Therefore, it takes thousands of years for soil to form. Which of the statements below correctly describe soil? A. Soil is important for plants. B. Soil is renewable resource. C. Soil can be replenished easily. Or D. Soil is a non-renewable resource. You are correct. D. Soil is a non-renewable resource. Let's have number 14 question. Philippines is a home of different species of plants and animals. Do you agree that our latitude position in the globe can influence the high diversity of life forms? A. No. The diversity of life forms in the country does not depend on its position in the globe. B. No, the latitude position of our country does not affect the high diversity of life forms at all. C. Yes, the Philippines is one lucky country with its thick forests, bodies of water, fertile soil, and many landforms. And D. Yes, the Philippines receives year-round sunshine and abundant rainfall that are needed by plants and animals to grow and reproduce. Correct. It's letter D. Yes, the Philippines receives year-round sunshine and abundant rainfall that are needed by plants and animals to grow and reproduce. Last question. Lance was tasked to discuss in their class the different geologic structures in the country and the presence of minerals. He was asked by one of his classmates if there is a relationship between the geologic structures and the presence of minerals. Lance answered yes. Do you think his answer is correct? A. No. The presence of mineral resources in the country does not depend on the different geologic structures present. B. Yes, the rich mineral resources can be attributed to the presence of many active volcanoes and trenches in the country. C. Yes, the presence of mineral resources tells us that our country experiences frequent geologic events such as earthquakes. Or D. No, there is no known scientific investigations showing the association of geologic structures and the presence of minerals in the country. The correct answer here is letter B. Yes, the rich mineral resources can be attributed to the presence of many active volcanoes and trenches in the country. Okay, for those who got it right, congratulations. Okay, let's move on with our discussion. Lesson 1 is all about the Earth's natural resources. What's in? The location of a certain place can be described using the latitude and longitude. That was our lesson on our first module you're given a map and you are asked to study it and you're going to describe the location of the philippines in the map with respect to its latitude and longitude write your answer on a separate sheet of paper based on the map philippines is located where that is the picture so the Philippines is situated at 12.88 degree north, 121.77 degree east. Okay. Places near the equator receive greater amount of heat from the sun. The closer the place to the equator, the warmer the climate is. And the closer the place to the poles, the colder the climate. Countries located near the equator experience sunshine all year round and received abundant rainfall. How do you think our location affects the varied life forms? Okay, this is the Philippines in the world map. So the Philippines is located there, near the equator. Okay, let's have what's new. Activity 1, where do I belong? So you're asked to write R. If it is uh, things that can be replaced easily and write NR if not replaced easily when used okay so number one is three so it is replaced is it about number two 
Yes, that is replaced easily. Number three, yes, are replaced easily. Number four, not replaced easily. And number five, not replaced easily. Very good. Okay, so let's move on. Defining natural resources. If we look around, we can see how lucky we are. We are blessed with bodies of water such as rivers, lakes, and oceans, and different land forms like hills, valleys, and mountains. Our country is also home to many kinds of animals and plants. The air, water, plants, animals, soil, rocks, and minerals are collectively named or called as natural resources. Remember that air, water, plants, animals, soil, rocks, and minerals are collectively called natural resources. Natural resources are the things that we can find in our environment that we use to meet our needs. These resources are not made by humans or any scientific experiments inside the laboratories, but they exist in nature. There are two types of natural resources, and they are the renewable and the non-renewable. Okay? Let us discuss the difference between the two. When we say renewable resources, these are materials that can be replaced easily or have the potential to be replaced over time. On the other hand, non-renewable resources are natural resources that are limited supply or once consumed cannot be replaced. Can you think of examples of renewable and non-renewable resources? Yes, the foods that we eat come from plants and animals. When we consume the plants around us, these plants can be replaced by planting them again after each harvest. We also eat animals, but animals grow and reproduce new ones. The young animals that are born replenish the animals that were consumed. Therefore, plants and animals are renewable resources because they can be replaced after some time. Meanwhile, coal, oil, and natural gas are examples of non-renewable resources because they will eventually run out. Are we lucky in the Philippines? Philippines is considered rich in natural resources because of our tropical climate. The Philippines receives an abundant rainfall and lots of sunshine. This is one of the reasons why we have many different kinds of plants and animals. Based on the records of the Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or PAGASA, on average, our country experiences about 20 typhoons in a year. Although, rain and typhoons may result to some serious problems like flooding and landslides. We cannot deny the fact that water is essential to life. We need water for domestic, irrigation, industrial purposes, among others. Watershed is a catchment area that drains the water into streams, rivers, lakes, and springs. Some of the watersheds in the Philippines are Mount Apo in Davao, Cotabato, the Mesa Dam in Metro Manila, and Angat Dam in Bulacan. These watersheds supplied water needed by the communities and the varied life forms in that area. A severe drought may cause rivers and deep wells to dry up, but when rain comes, the water is replaced. Therefore, water in this case is also a renewable resource. On the other hand, too much rain can cause floods, which can wash away the topsoil where plants grow. Can topsoil be replaced easily? How are soils formed? Soils are formed from rocks that were broken down by physical and chemical weathering along with the materials from dead plants and animals. Generally, it takes thousands of years for soils to form. So, when soils are washed away, it takes a very long time to replace them. Hence, soil is a non-renewable resource. Philippines Rich Resources 
Aside from the fertile and arable lands in the Philippines, our country is recognized as the fifth mineral-rich country in the world. Why? Because we are third in gold reserves, fourth in copper, and fifth in nickel. Why do you think our country is rich in mineral resources? So looking at figure 2, Philippines in the Pacific Ring of Fire. Our location class in the Pacific Ring of Fire, as shown in figure 2, accounts for this bounty. It is called the Ring of Fire because there is a continuing movement of very hot magma or molten materials under the ground. The countries included in the Pacific Ring of Fire is home to approximately 75% of the world's active volcanoes. The heat within the earth causes rocks and other materials to melt, forming magma. When magma rises during volcanic eruptions, some of the magma does not reach the surface of the earth, but instead slowly cools and hardens, forming different kinds of igneous rocks. With favorable temperature and pressure conditions, the rocks containing metals melt and redeposit, eventually forming minerals. Metallic mineral deposits like copper, gold, silver, lead, and zinc are usually mined from deep within the roots of extinct volcanoes or those volcanoes with no record of eruption for the last 10,000 years and are not expected to erupt again in the future. Metals have many uses. For instance, copper is used for making electrical wires. Iron is used in making steel bars for buildings and construction of roads. The milk cans are created from tin. Stainless cooking wires are made out of mixture of nickel and copper. Gold is usually used in making pieces of jewelry, although metals are non-renewable resources. People use them without limits because of the economic gain brought by these metals. Moreover, our geological conditions also provide us with high potential of renewable energy resources. Okay, you're given a table below that lists the different renewable energies and their sources. Renewable energy, wave the solar energy, main source for this energy from the sun. Geothermal energy, source, harnessed from heat within the earth. Hydropower, derived from the fast-flowing water. Wind energy generated from wind and biomass energy from the decomposition of organic waste. Okay. These renewable energy resources serves as the alternative resources for the commonly used renewable energy resources such as coal, crude oil, natural gas, and other fossil fuels. These are formed from the geologic deposits and decayed plants and animals that existed millions of years ago. Coal, crude oil, and natural gas and other fossil fuels are non-renewable because it will take millions of years for dead plants and animals to turn into fossil fuels. So at the right side, they're given the pictures of the different renewable and non-renewable energy sources. For renewable energy, we have solar, hydropower, biomass, geothermal, wind. For the non-renewable energy, oil, coal, nuclear, and natu natural gas. Much of the energy we use today are generated from these renewable energy sources. Based on the 2017 Philippines Energy Statistics, approximately 88% of our energy consumption is taken from the renewable energy resources while only 12% of the energy consumption accounted for the renewable energy resources. Oil and coal were listed as a primary source of energy in the country. The non-renewable energy resources are exhaustible and once consumed entirely, it will take millions of years to replenish them. With the high potential for cheap and clean energy from renewable resources, it is important that the alternative energy resources can be explored to supply our energy needs before it becomes too late. Okay, what's more? So, activity 2. This is all about renewable and non-renewable. Directions. 
Welcome to the Earth Shop, your everything store. It sells various products and everything that you need. Today, the shop is giving free coupon which you can use to make home the item of your choice. But to get the free coupon, you need to segregate the products from renewable and renewable resources. Put the renewable products in a bag and non-renewable products in the cart. Write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. Enjoy shopping. Okay, let's see. Okay, so the earth shop. So there is the renewable and non-renewable. So all you need to do is grab them. For renewable, we have cotton, either shoes, wooden chair, water, and paper. And for non-renewable, we have steel, soda can, crude oil, gold necklace, and petroleum. Okay, what I have learned. So read the paragraph carefully. Identify the correct word that fit in the blank in each sentence. Choose your answer from words inside the box. Write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. Okay, so let's have this one. Blank are the things that we can find in our environment that we use to meet our needs. This is natural resources. Blank are the materials that can be replaced easily when used while. Renewable resources. And number three, these are natural resources that once consumed can be replaced. Non-renewable resources. Okay, let's proceed with number four. That is accounts for this bounty that because of the Pacific Ring of Fire. And number five, molten materials under the ground. It is called magma. Okay, for number six, the heat within the earth. That is volcanoes, eventually forming minerals. Eight, energy from the sun is solar energy. And for number nine, energy derived from the fast flowing matter. That's hydropower. And number ten, crude oil and other are called fossil fuels. Okay, so we have this all. Okay, let's move on with the next slide. What can I do? So you're given here a picture. Look around your home, backyard, and neighborhood. List the categorized materials that are are made from renewable, non-renewable natural resources that you can see. Do you find this resource important? How do you show your appreciation and their use? Write your answer. So uh, the answers may vary depending on the student. So it's up to you guys. Okay, for our assessment, Read the following questions carefully and choose the letter of the correct answer. Okay, so let's have it. Number one. The leather industry uses skins or hides of cows, goats, and sheep to create leather products such as shoes, bags, and apparels. The raw materials used to these products are examples of Very good renewable resources number two which of the following materials can be replenished in a short amount of time after being used correct it is cardboards letter d water plants and animals are some of the things that we gather from our environment to sustain our needs what is the best description of these things? Correct. They are called natural resources. Number four. Materials are natural resources that take millions of years to be replenished. Once consumed entirely are called? Very good. Non-renewable. Which of the following is not correctly much? Good. Letter B, crude oil, renewable. Number six, which pair of materials takes long years before they can be replenished? Very good. Letter C, metals and minerals. Let's have number seven. What do you call the natural resource produced from the remains and decayed plants and animals that have existed millions of years ago? Correct, that is called 
fossil fuel. Letter number eight. Electricity can be produced by generators that are powered by the kinetic energy of flowing water. What kind of energy is being described? You are also correct. It's letter A, hydropower. Okay, let's have number 9. Which of the following list includes all renewable energy resources? Great, it's letter C, hydropower, solar, and geothermal. Okay, let's proceed with question number among the statements given below, which correctly describes fossil fuels? 1. Coal, oil, and natural gas are fossil fuels. 2. Fossil fuels are non-renewable resources, hence they cannot be replenished easily. 3. It takes millions of years for a remains of plants and animals to turn into fossil fuels. Or 4. Fossil fuels are renewable resources formed from the decomposition of organic waste of animals. You're correct. It is letter B. 1, 2, and 3 only. Number 11. Michaela was playing in their backyard when she saw pieces of paper cuts. Soda, cans, popsicle sticks, and an old leather shoe scattered in one corner. Which of the following materials were made from renewable resources? Correct, it's letter C. Paper cuts, popsicle sticks, and old leather shoe. Number 12. Which of the following is the best reason why Philippines is rich in natural resources? Great. D. Philippines is near the equator where there is sunshine all year round and rainfall is abundant. Number 13. Plants and animals are renewable resources because they can be replaced easily. If coal, crude oil, and other gas or other natural gas are formed from decayed plants and animals, why are they considered as renewable resources? Correct. It will take a very long time to produce them. That is letter A. Number 14. Teacher Elves asked Sak in the Philippines location in the Pacific Ring of Fire as a relationship to its rich mineral deposits. Sak answered yes. Do you think his answer is correct? You are correct. Letter C. Yes, countries which are part of the Pacific Ring of Fire have rich mineral deposits because of the presence of many active volcanoes. And let's have the last question. Is it correct to say that our position near the equator is the reason why we have high diversity of plants and animals in the country? Okay, you're correct also. B. Yes, places near the equator have tropical climate. Hence, we experience lots of sunshine and abundant rainfall giving the varied life forms their essential needs to grow and reproduce. Okay, congratulations for those who got it right. Okay, so here is some additional activities for you. So uh, here is the rubric. You're going to create your own poster making. Okay, if you don't have questions with this lesson, this is Sir Topper saying thank you and good morning.